I've been experimenting with taking fun photos of fruit and today I'm going to create a pseudo studio setup using nothing more than an old picture frame, a couple of placemats and of course my smartphone. First thing I'm going to do is prepare my subject. This strawberry here looks about the juiciest. What I'm going to do is to stand it up. So I just need to cut the top off. I don't want to lose too much. So it's just careful with a knife, obviously. Just chop the head off like that. So it's got enough to stand up. Let's get rid of that. Good, right. So to create this uh, budget studio effect, I'm going to use these placemats. You could use a piece of card or, or anything, really. So what I'm going to do is have a bottom and a back. I'm going to stand up my back like this. What you can do is push a table against the wall and have your wall as your backdrop. Uh, that doesn't quite work in my kitchen, so this is what I'm going to go with. I found that I can stand this placemat up with my uh, little tripod like that, and that's pretty solid. The next thing, we've got loads of these picture frames around the house. I've taken the glass off of one of those. And I'm just going to put it down on this surface. I'm going to pop that strawberry just in the middle like that. Let's see with a very basic setup what, what we get in the camera. I have to be really, really careful to not get too much of the background. I'm still getting a bit of the wall in here. If I get it in Put it, put it in portrait, not portrait mode, but just kind of portrait orientation. Again, I'm looking down on the strawberry, which is making it look small. I want this strawberry to be the hero of my image. So I need to rethink this a little bit. Now, here's a tip. Most smartphones, the camera's kind of in the corner on, on one of the sides, um, which the way that we tend to hold it means that the camera's on top. When you're taking pictures of small subjects, that means you're always going to be looking down on it. So what I'm going to try is turning the camera essentially upside down. That means that the camera lens is at the bottom. Now let's see what effect that has. Right. I'm now at eye level, if you like, with my strawberry, with my subject. And that is instantly far more interesting. If I just angle it down a little bit. I can get the reflection and the strawberry in. Not bad, but the problem is that in order to get close enough, the image is getting blurred because the camera can't focus. There's this minimum focusing distance that I, I go on about a lot, which is a real pain. So I'm going to zoom in. Many phones have got optical zooms with a couple of different lenses. This one doesn't have optical zoom, it's got a digital zoom. That can, that will degrade the image a little bit, but for social media, and I know this is a bit controversial, for social media output, I think it's fine. Experiment. But what that does give me now is I can be further away, I can get tighter focus, and my subject now fills the frame. That is the framing that I want. I'm getting the strawberry and its reflection in the same shot. That is exactly what I wanted from this. Here we go. Let's move it around a little bit. Okay. So the framing is good. I'm getting the reflection in the strawberry. The lighting for me isn't quite as dramatic as I'd like it to be. I'm seeing a bit of the background here, which is fine. It's there, but the strawberry isn't being lifted from the image. So time to bring out my favorite uh, photography aid, which is one of my little lamps. Any lamp will work for this, of course, but this is the one I've got. And I'm just going to experiment with popping the light in different places and seeing how the phone reacts to that. Oh, wow. Okay. So straight away, what's happening is, is that the phone is adjusting its exposure to take into account the fact there's a lot more light. And when I'm shining the light on the strawberry, on the subject here, what it's doing is darkening the background. So the subject is being brought out and the background is fading away, which is exactly what I want. There we go. Try a few different angles. Oh, wow, this is good. Okay, so what I'm doing is just shining the, the light just a bit 
from behind. It's a kind of backlight. And I'm now seeing just the top of the fringes. I'm seeing some of the detail, like the hairs on the skin of the strawberry coming through, and that's a really pleasing effect. Don't get too close. So I lose some of the detail on the strawberry because that's not being lit, but I do see the, uh, this kind of halo effect around it. If I just bring that round to the front, it starts to look a little bit harsh. When, I'm, when, the, lo when the light is close to where the camera is, it's actually the less pleasing kind of effect. And that's one of the problems when using the flash that's built into a phone, because the flash is next door to the camera, very rarely looks good. The ability to move your light around is really where the interesting stuff happens. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So shining a bit from behind, not quite fully from behind, I get some of the detail, but also I get this really, really nice reflection in the strawberry too. One last thing I'm gonna try is indirect light. So rather than shining the light directly on the strawberry, I'm going to shine it on the background. So even though this slate background is really quite dark, if I shine it on the background, it not only lights up the background, but it lights up the strawberry and it, that is probably my favourite effect. Experiment with different places to shine your light. We've got a bit of ambient light in here as well, which is, um, which is great. But if you were to do this at night with the lights out, you might get some even more dramatic effects. But I think this is a great way to bring fruit to life. And it certainly follows many of the techniques that a professional food photographer would use. <laughs>